¿Cómo le pagaba la ley? ¿Era un, uh, por cuadro, por, por verano o cómo? Yo el que se cuidaba de pagar era la Gaba, la señora Gaba. Era la contable, la administradora de la casa. Y ella era la que se cuidaba de todo. Porque no sabía nada de, de la moneda ni de estas cosas, no sabía. Porque a veces me preguntaba a cuánto estaba el dólar y cuánto, cuánto hacían una cantidad de dólares. Cuando decía, ¿cuánto? A ¿10.000 dólares cuántos son? En pesetas. Porque nunca lo sabía. No sabía. Íbamos a los sitios y me decía, paga tú que yo no sé pagar. Siempre me decía. ¿Y te pagabas? <ríe> claro, pero después pasaba las cuentas yo también. Porque si no me hubiera arruinado. <ríe> After the death of her first husband, Paul Eloi, Gala and Dali were married at last, according to the rites of the Catholic Church. In a series of large canvases, Dali now combined his religious fervor with his passion for Gala, to the point where the Madonna and Gala became inseparable. The style of these pictures refers deliberately to the paintings of Dali's great Spanish predecessor, Velázquez, and other old masters. When he draws Gala, Dali truly takes himself for Vermeer, and in the image of the master of Delft, sacrifices himself to the cult of maddening love for his sole model. Personally, I wish we could hear something from Gala herself. It seems she remained ever sphinx-like. No comment from Gala. At the age of nine, in Figueras, I developed a delirious obsession with the theme of Vermeer's lace maker, a reproduction of which in my father's office I had sometimes furtively observed through the half-open door. In the lace maker, everything converges exactly towards a needle which is not drawn but merely suggested. And the sharpness of that needle I have felt very acutely in my own flesh. In May 1955, I asked the curator of the Louvre to allow me to make a copy of that Vermeer. With a great display of precautions, the painting was brought into a small room and I set up my easel in the presence of the staff of curators and a few friends. I observed with the most careful attention the highly upsetting picture. I went close to the picture and with my cane took a few measurements to check out an intuition. The curators, not daring to interfere, exchanged fearful looks at my savage approach to a work that they considered a unique treasure. Suddenly, to everyone's surprise, I laid in on my canvas a set of rhinoceros horns in place of the lace maker I was supposed to copy. Their apprehension turned to stupefaction. The first time I saw a photograph of the lace maker and a live rhinoceros together, I realized that if there should be a battle, the lace maker would win, because the lace maker is, morphologically, a rhinoceros horn. Dolly, you come over, haven't you, to paint a portrait of Sir Lawrence Olivier? Exactly. Is it going to be a, um, a what we would regard, perhaps, in our old-fashioned way as a somewhat eccentric picture? Is it going to have lobsters and things like that in it, or is it just going, is it going to be like him? It is a portrait, in my opinion, is perhaps one of the most sensational. Like it produces one integral and complete Dalinian portrait. Like it very much one animal in mm. the center of. How does it call in English? The sanglier. The sanglier, the blood. You mean the spirit? 
Non, 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 le sanglier, petit animal avec... Euh, oh, le sanglier. Le sanglier, what the hell is that sanglier? Uh, rhinoceros? Oh, it's a little bit little there, tiny but, uh, thing. What's it like? Describe it. C'est le, 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 uh, mais, uh, uh, c'est un porc avec des longs dents. Oui, 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 oui. C'est, c'est un porc. C'est, c'est ça. Un c'est, c'est, c'est un porc. C'est, c'est le totem. C'est exactement le totem of Richard. The, yes. So it's uh, that Sir Lawrence and Richard III will be both resemble this delicious animal with the teeth. Exactly. It's one big collar in enamel, gold enamel, mm. and precious stones in the center. Uh, represent the totem of the I animal. can't wait to see it. When should we have Very it? Very aggressive mm. animal, you know. I know, I know, I know, I know. Commissions like the portrait of Laurence Olivier were an essential source of income for Dali, whose serious paintings were now too few to finance his increasingly lavish lifestyle. <laughs> Je suis fou du chocolat l'envers. The rare canvases Dali now produced anticipated the discoveries of later movements in art like pop and neorealism. But though the prices for his work remained high, Dali was forced to earn money in other ways. His notoriety had made him a very marketable commodity and he accepted lucrative offers indiscriminately designing anything from perfume bottles to postage stamps. Dali became a brand name. First, it dissolves. Happy bubbles, but devoted bubbles. Then the Alka-Seltzer shoots into the stomach. Here, it neutralizes that bad excess acid. Meantime, the special for aspirin is speeding into your bloodstream to all places of pain. So those beautiful places will feel beautiful again. Alka-Seltzer is a work of art, truly one of a kind, like uh, Dali. Every afternoon at the Hotel Maurice in Paris, all those people would arrive at five o'clock for the tea time. And sometimes it was full. There was 25, 30, 40 people there in the salon. And everybody was drinking tea and smoking. And the more colorful, the better. Dali wanted them extremely colorful. So he went wild when uh, hippie time arrived, because the hippies for him were the epitome of what he likes. Long hair, flowing robes, boy, girls, very difficult to tell who was who. He liked all that. And um, so he filled this very conventional uh, hotel, the Maurice, with those characters. He was not, you see, like those painters who retire themselves in their studio. Dali wasn't like that. He used to tell me that in the Renaissance, the painters were friends with the kings. I mean, Michelangelo was uh, with the pope. Uh, uh, They used to entertain. They lived in castle. They they had lavish uh, dinner banquets. And uh, he said that how a painter should be. He should always be surrounded with people and be active and and keep in touch with what's happening in the world, the discovery, the travels. That's how he would like to be. You see, a, a man, uh, I think perhaps he wants to be remembered as a man of the Renaissance, but in our century. <laughs> designed for me by Salvador Dali, and uh, it's made of uh, the green peridots and diamonds. And uh, Dali says that uh, they are, everything comes from the, from the sky, the water comes from the sky, and that comes to the fountain, from the fountain to little springs and rivulets, rivulets into the green sea, and then back again to the sky. Dali had become the most commercially successful artist of his generation, and his popularity extended well beyond the galleries which could afford his paintings. Dali exhibitions were held in such unlikely locations as the lobbies of expensive hotels, 
and pictures bearing his signature commanded very high prices. Dali and his managers were keen to exploit the huge demand for his work, and a scandal developed round rumours that he had signed blank sheets of paper onto which any image could be printed. Dali himself has done nothing to remove the confusion surrounding the dubious authenticity of many of these works. 